Today, I'm going to show you how to generate a texture using Stable Diffusion, which is the new AI algorithm which converts your text into an image. With this, we can create seamless textures and also upscale them right within the tool. I'm going to show you how to download and use. And then we can use another tool to create maps for the texture, normal maps, height maps, etc. I've also made a website called pixela.ai where you can upload the textures you create with Stable Diffusion so that others can use them in their game. Or if you don't want to generate your own textures, you can just browse the website I've created, see if a texture fits, and download any of the textures you want. As I'd mentioned, currently the law states that these images can be used for commercial use. I know there is a lot of discourse online, whether it's ethical or not. However, I believe that this tool can be used to really help developers and artists speed up their workflow, especially for something like texturing. Enough babbling, let's get right into it. So we're going to be using Automatic 111's Stable Diffusion Web UI, which is regarded as the best UI to generate stable diffused images. And they do have some instructions. I'll be showing you how to do this on Windows. For Windows, you're going to need to install Python 3.10.6 and also Git. So you can just click that link and you'll want to make sure to install that exact version or Stable Diffusion will have some issues. And if I search 3.10.6 by pressing Control F, you'll see that it was published on August 2nd. And so if we just click that one, we can scroll down until we find the file section and we can install the Windows installer 64 bit. And you can just press that. And I already have it installed, but you can just go through this installation process. I like to add Python to the environment variables so we can access Python in the command line. As so, Python, and you'll see Python will open up here. And you can just go and click install and go through that process. And you'll also need to install Git if you want to have the automatic installations, which I definitely recommend. If you don't want to have that web UI updated constantly, you can just go to the code and download the zip file, extract that zip file, and you'll have the contents of this repository. However, I definitely recommend downloading Git. So we can just follow that there and click the 64-bit Git for Windows setup. And you can just click that .exe file. And then you can go through these options here. I have some of these settings clicked. For example, I do have Git LFS clicked, which is kind of necessary for Unity, which supports large files. I like to use Visual Studio Code as Git's default editor, just because I'm used to that. Instead of master, I like to name the repository's main. So I override the default branch name. Then I leave this on the recommended setting. I also leave this as is, and then I leave the next few settings as is, and then you just click install and go through that. So once you've installed the Git and Python, now we can clone this repository. So we can go into the command line or we can go into the Git bash that's been downloaded, which I definitely prefer to the command line. I'm gonna press control and zoom in so we can just see this better. And so I'm going to go into my desktop here, CD desktop. If you don't know how to use the command line, this is basically going into the desktop directory. And then we can just do git clone and we can go back here and copy the URL of the GitHub repository, right click and paste, and then click enter. And now you'll see that we have a folder on our desktop and we can CD into that stable diffusion web UI. If git isn't working, try restarting the terminal and the computer. Okay, so we look at the contents of this folder. This will match the Git repository. And so we do have to install two more things here. So you see in the instructions, we actually need to download the model for Stable Diffusion because this just installs the UI. Now it needs the model itself. So we can right click and go to the dependencies here. And you'll see that in the number three instruction here, it will have an official download link. If you click that, it takes you to Hugging Face, which is a popular AI website where you can then download the weights. Personally, though, I just go to the file storage option and I just download it directly from here because I've had issues. It tells you to log in with Hugging Face and I don't really feel like logging in anywhere. So once you click download, it will start the four gigabyte download. So it is quite hefty. And this is for version 1.4 of Stable Diffusion. If you want to use the latest versions of Stable Diffusion, such as 2.0, you can go into the wiki tab of the GitHub repo, go to features, and you'll see Stable Diffusion 2.0. So unfortunately, this model currently only supports 768 by 768 resolution. 
and textures generally are recommended to be powers of 2 so 128 256 512 1024 and so it is still new but this process will be exactly the same as the one that i will show you and you can add multiple models into the folder and then select between them in the web ui which is very useful and you can just browse some other features that are included here the tool is very very fascinating and i am very impressed at the speed of which this tool and stable diffusion has been increasing now for this you do need a fairly powerful graphics card which is another reason why i made pixela.ai if you don't have a powerful computer or graphics card you can make use of ai without needing to run it yourself under the wiki you can go to troubleshooting and if you have any issues, they might have an answer here, especially if you have a lower end graphics card. They have some flags that you can add, which I'll show you where to add these depending on how much VRAM you have. All right. And so once that's downloaded, basically we want to add this to our project folder. So I went to the desktop and clicked on the Stable Diffusion Web UI folder. And then we go to the Models folder here and we click Stable Diffusion. And you'll see there's a little note here that says put stable diffusion checkpoints here so any stable diffusion checkpoint model you can actually drag that into that folder and it will just take some time to copy that over all right now once that's done we can go back to the base folder here and basically the file we're most concerned with is web ui userbat and this is where all the magic happens and this is what will run our program but if we right click that and we click edit, the notepad will pop up. And this is basically some of the instructions that get passed into the web UI. So we can set our Python path. However, it's not necessary right off the bat. Right here where you see set command line args are where you'd put the extra arguments. If you are running a lower end PC, you'd just copy them there. For example, if you need to add this flag, you can just copy that right there. And so one thing that we can do to make sure our UI is always up to date, we can enter here, git pull and save that. So basically before this web UI is called, it will always try to pull the latest version from git. So that ensures that we are always updated. And so once that is done, we can just click that as it is, and it will open the command line and we'll start to run the program. Now this will take some time, especially the first time because it has to install some stuff and just be patient until it has all finished installing. Alrighty, it's finally done after quite some time here. You'll see that now it will tell you a local URL near the end and we can just copy that and then go back into our Chrome or whatever browser you're using and paste that URL and you'll see that voila, we have the UI up and running and it was pretty easy to install. And if you see here, there's this little drop down here, we can select the checkpoint that we've installed. And if you have any other ones, you can just select those as needed. And so there are a lot of stuff going on here, but I'm going to break it down for what you need to know. Also make sure to keep this command line open because if not, it basically closes the program and we don't want that happening. So what we are interested in is the text to image. So basically we will write some text and then an image will pop up. Now, I'm not here to tell you exactly how to write the best text because that is a whole rabbit hole of its own. There is this interesting website that I came across and it's very useful. I'm going to link it in the description. But for prompt basics, the structure of a prompt goes somewhat like this. You have the subject, the style that you want it in, the action or scene that it's taking place in, some artists that you want the image to be modeled after. And I know there's a lot of ethical concerns around this, so please keep that in mind and then any filters and then it goes on to describe exactly what these would look like and filters are something extra for example if you add trending on art station it tends to look a little more artistic or if you want something more realistic you can add unreal engine you can add 8k etc another great resource for prompts is lexica.art for example i can do a brick texture here and some will come up and if you click it you can see the prompt and you can also explore more images of a similar style and you can look at those prompts and see their guidance scales, their seeds, which is kind of like an ID or a coordinate in a sense, similar to Minecraft, how you had a seed and that seed always generates the same image. If you combine a seed with a prompt, those two will always generate the same image. So that's also important to keep in mind. 
And there's also this other cool website that I found on Reddit called publicprompts.art, which if you go there and maybe we can go to a animals category and click one of these examples, you'll see that the prompt is provided there along with the image and you can just download both. However, you do have to log in and I don't really want to do that right now, but here's another great resource along with a lot of others scattered around the internet. So let's say we want to generate a brick wall texture and I want to make it Unreal Engine 8K photorealistic with real time ray tracing. So that's our prompt. That's what we want the image to look like. Then the negative prompt is things we don't want the image to look like. So let's say our image starts to look like spaghetti. So then we do not want it to absolutely look like spaghetti. So we add that as a negative prompt. Here the sampling steps is basically how many steps you want the algorithm to take in generating your image. Now you're going to want to play around with these values. The article that I previously showed has some recommendations on values and what the differences are. So here are the steps. You'll see that depending on the steps, the image starts to look different along with the actual sampling method. And I won't go into detail with this because that also kind of escapes me. But each sampling method has a different style and the number of steps also depends. You'll see that if you run your sampling steps higher than 70 or 100, it might not have any um, so I like to keep it at a relatively low value, maybe like 30. You can play around with this though. And there are then other sampling methods here. Euler A, Euler are pretty good ones. DDIM is a fast one. And again, this article has some examples on different ones. This is the default one, fast for simple images. This one's more if you're creative and you can play around with this. In this case, I'll just keep it to Euler A. I want to have the width and height to 512 by 512 which is what this model was trained on and it will give the best results. And it's also a power of two. We don't have any faces within our image, so we can leave that unclicked. We definitely want tiling because that will cause our image to tile, making it seamless. And I don't like to click this high res fix because it really doesn't make it high res. It actually makes it look quite weird. And so batch count and batch size, you can increase this to increase the amount of images that are generated. So for example, we want to generate four images in one batch. And if you want to generate four batches, that will be 16 images. However, be aware that the more images you generate, the longer it will take. CFG scale is how close you want your image to mirror your prompt. So for example, the maximum value is that you want the image to look exactly like the prompt. And so you'd think that putting it at the maximum value is good. However, it's not a good value is usually between 7 and 15 or you can play around with that if you put it at the low end that basically means that this image will look nothing like the prompt whatsoever i find that 7 8 is a good value here the seed is negative 1 that means this is random so it will generate a new seed each time if you want to put in your own seed you can just input it there and here are some extra settings that i will not go over and once you're done we can click generate here and it will start to generate. You can see if we click on our command line tool, it shows the process of the generated images, which it's having a little bit of a hard time here. So I'm actually going to restart this because it just froze. And I don't know, sometimes that happens. That's okay. We just click it again and hope for the best. As with all software engineering things, close and open it again. All right, so opening up the new URL, we can just type in our prompt again. And I've also removed the little dash. I don't know if that was causing it to mess up. If it crashes outright, it might be something wrong with your prompt that it doesn't support some character or word. And so try messing around with the prompt. And so you'll see that we generated a brick wall here. I'm not quite a fan of it. So if we increase the sampling steps and now let's generate four. And this is how you kind of test different things with this algorithm. You try different steps, different sampling methods, different CFG scales. And so you'll see that now there's come some that are pretty cool. And these are seamless textures, which is really nice. 512 by 512. If you save one of these, let's say I want to save this one and you can click this little folder icon. And basically under the stable diffusion web UI, it'll be under outputs and then it'll be under images. And you can see all of the images that have been saved here. And so this is really cool. It's 512 by 512. Let's say we want to increase it by 
1024 to 1024. What we can do is send to image to image. So this basically takes in an image and outputs an image. And you can keep the same prompt or you can just make it a little vague, like highly detailed that you want to make the brick look more detailed. And if you scroll down, you can mess around with the sampling steps and the methods. However, I found that according to internet, the larger the sampling steps, it actually works a little better in this case. So if I put the sampling steps to the max and be aware this will take more time and I keep everything else, I select tiling, the CFG scale, I keep the same. The denoising strength, actually you want to lower that maybe to 0.2. So basically if it's at zero, it will try to keep the original image. If it's at one, it'll add a lot of noise. And so it won't look like the original image at all. So with 0.2, we still want it to look like the original image, but also want it give it some leeway so that the high resolution works. And then if you scroll down under script, you can select SD upscale. And so this will upscale the image times two. So it will turn it into a 1024 by 1024. And there are some options here. I read that the recommended one is the ESR GAN 4X, but you can also go to this model database for upscaling and you can scroll down and just download any one that you want and use it for your case. I'm not gonna go over this, but this is an option if you want a different upscaling model. All right, so now that we have that done, we can just click generate here and it will take some time because now it's generating a 1024 by 1024 image with a lot of sampling steps. And you'll see that now we have a generated image. This is 1024 by 1024. If we click save and then we open up that folder, you'll see that if you go to properties and then details, it is 1024 by 1024. It does look a little different, but this will just come with kind of messing around with the sampling steps, the sampling method, the CFG scale and the denoising strength and the upscaler method. So it is a lot of work. And so this is why I made Pixela as well. So if you do come up with any cool textures, be sure to upload it there so others can use it because this takes a lot of work and time to configure a good output. And so basically, let's say we want to use this texture within our game. Now, this is great and all, but usually we want to have some maps generated for our texture, like a normal map to give it an appearance of depth. There's one called normal map online, which generates a normal map given an image. So if we go to the image that we generated here, we just drag it and drop it there. You'll see that it automatically generates a normal map for it and you can mess around with the strength. Now I'm not very knowledgeable on what parameters are the best in this case. However, you can see kind of how the output would look in this preview and there's a displacement setting. And you can change the model here so you can just see it a little better to see how that would look and you can change the contrast levels if you click displacement here if it's more blurred if it's more sharp ambient occlusion specular it looks horrible okay that's better and you can just download that and you'll see that we have our displacement map in the download there and then we can go into our unity project so this is the example i made for the previous video but let's just remove this shader here and so if we import our image, which is the main image, and then we import the normal map, which is under the downloads, and then we can right click and create a new material. We can call it the brick material. Then we can drag the main image into the albedo and then the normal map, we can drag it into the normal map image. And you'll also want to click fix now in this case. And once you're done, you can actually just plop that into your 3D object and you'll see that now it looks pretty nice and you can change the metallic settings here smoothness etc you can also change the filter mode so if you don't want a filter on the image it will appear more sharp you want a filter also be sure to pay attention to performance as you add different textures compressions resize algorithm etc and then I just want to show you the other tool which is called materialize so let's go through that process of installing that so materialize is an image to material tool and it can actually generate a lot more maps than the other tool you can do a normal map a height map metallic smoothness map it was used in uncharted which is really cool and it is open source so you can scroll all the way down and install it for 64 bits or go to the downloads here and click that then we can show in folder 
ignore all of these weird images that I've used for editing. Let's right click and extract all into the downloads folder. And we can click that. And then let's click materialize.exe. And that's really cool how it's actually a Unity app. So this was made in Unity, which is really impressive. All right, so you'll see we can zoom in and out here. Now, if I click diffuse map and I click this little O icon, the text is so little that I can barely see. Then let's navigate to our folder. All right, so I finally found it here. Let me just click that. And so now we have this diffuse map. And from that, we can create a height map and we can change the settings here. You can see the difference on how this would look. So this is definitely more useful just to see how the difference looks. And you can kind of change the different weights around. And I'm not a expert on any of this really, but I just wanted to show you that this other cool tool exists. And then we can set as the height map. And so then you can just create a normal map here. You can set it as the normal map, create a metallic map, set it as the metallic map, create a smoothness map, and just continue doing the maps as we so please and we can show the full material to see how it looks it looks absolutely horrid but if we remove the metallic and the smoothness map it actually looks a little better and we can preview it and you'll see that now it has more depth to it and so they actually have a tutorial on how to make bricks ironically and so i'll link this in the description and i won't be going over this in this video because it's a little out of scope we can even add post-processing to it, which is really nice. So we can see how that looks. And this looks much better than the other generator. And so then to save it, we can just save the project here. I'm going to save it to the image to image location. And we can call this just brick texture and click select. And so basically what that will do, it will generate all the images that we need. And though back in Unity, I'm going to actually just create a new folder for this so this doesn't get lost. And we can just copy over all of this images into Unity. And then we can assign the maps one by one. So the metallic map, we can just assign that. You'll see it changes it. This is the height map. We can change the heights. You can see how the height changes. This one is the normal map. And oh boy, it is, it's not looking great. Press fix now on that normal map. We can change the smoothless values here. Then for the AO map, which is the occlusion map, we can add that as well. You'll see it adds some nice shadows. And yeah, that's basically it. You can adjust what maps you need as necessary and the values. Let's see how this looks with a sphere. We can increase the tiling. We increase the tiling to three by three. Now you see it is seamless. However, you'll see a little cut because of the maps. But you can just play around with those values and you can generate basically a whole world with these textures rather quickly without needing to draw them yourselves, which is really cool. And once again, if you don't want to do all that work, you can just check out Pixela and check out these generated images that I've uploaded and others have uploaded and you can generate maps from them. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe and thank you to the awesome patrons for their continued support. And also be sure to join our Discord, which is really cool. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.